Hi everyone. In the previous video, we talked about the parity bit problem. In this video, we will be talking a bit about the binary addition, which can also be modeled using a recurrent neural network. And just to give a hint uh, to this problem, first of all, this problem is taken from internet only, and I will put the link in the description. But just to give the context, we will have two input strings and we have to perform a binary addition over there. And to perform binary addition, there is always something like a carry step which is involved. Um, and this will be a bit clear as soon as we start explaining it um, in the solutions. So the uh, hint is there is going to be an input vector and this is the output value which comes out of it. And then we have to model this entire process using an RNN which is usually a vanilla RNN which looks like this. Now we proceed in this way. So this is the input 1 which we are having. I just copied the values from the question and input 2. Now if I add 1 and 0 we get the output as 1. We are not carrying anything. Now if I add 1 and 1 it is actually 2 but we write it as 0 and there is a carry of 1 in the next step. So it's like carry forward while we do the addition. And then in the next step we have 1 already. There is a 0. We add 1 and 0. We get 1 and the carry of 1 is taken over here which becomes 2 which is represented by 0 again and then a carry of 1 is there. So basically the uh, decimal to binary representation is happening over here. And uh, with the carry of 1 over here, we have 0 and 0. Both of them add up to 0, add 1, we get this value. And the process goes on and this is the output which we are getting and the carry which we are doing over here. Now let's see what are the possible combinations which we can model. Now over here, we can say that if we don't have a carry, we can have either 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. These are the possible values x1 and x2 can take at any point of time. If we ha don't have a carry, we put it as 0. And if we have a carry, we put it as 1. Now, if we don't have a carry and then we add uh, all of the terms, we get as yt because carry is definitely needed when we are calculating the yt as I showed before. And uh, on doing so, 0, 0 and 1 will give you 1. 0, 1 and 0 will give you 1 again. 0, 1 and 1 will give you 0 and there is going to be a carry of 1 in this scenario. And uh, then uh, 0, 0 and 0 will be giving you 0. And 1, 0, 1 will give you 0 and there is a carry of 1. And 1, 1, 0 again a value of 0 and a carry of 1 and so on. So the entire process could then be considered in two parts. Like we don't have a carry like NC is the no carry. C is the carry which is either 0 or 1 in the first column over here this one and then we get four combinations we don't have a carry and we print 1 and we don't have a carry and we print 0 we have a carry and we print 1 and we have a carry and we print 0 now how it is going to look like let's suppose this is our straight transition table so we don't have a carry let's say i start from here we don't have a carry and we print as zero so for the next step there is uh, the carry value is zero now in order to make sure we do a no carry with zero value this is the only possible way we can model it zero comma zero like if we had initially zero comma zero which was able to output zero and there was no carry now if i have to land up into this state like 0 comma 0 again with no carry and the output being printed as 0 we have to put it as 0 comma 0 only now if i have put it 0 comma 1 the output will be 1 with no carry if i put it as 1 comma 0 the output will be 1 with no carry if i put 1 comma 1 this output will be 0 with a carry of 1 so just we have to consider all the possible cases which can happen and fill the table accordingly. Now we were at no carry with the state being 0. So if I have to remain in the same state, we have to get 0 comma 0. Now if I have to go to no carry with 1, this is exactly what I did over here. I need to get either 1 0 or 0 1. So as of now, something may have happened in the previous step which led to no carry and the output was 0. 
and this is the only possible thing which could have happened and then uh, we could either remain in this state by uh, doing uh, by getting xt as this or we can go to no carry one by this and we can get to carry zero as well like if i get one comma one we can get output as zero but the carry is going to be one like in next step it will be carried forward in no way we can get carry as one and uh, we get the print as one as well so this might happen uh, only when we have a thing like one comma zero or oh, sorry one comma one with the carry of one carried forward uh, but we don't have a carry in the first place so this scenario is completely uh, out of scope so we don't model it over here now we come to a scenario which is no carry comma one like no carry comma one might happen only when we would have done something like zero one or one zero now we can remain in the same state by using the same uh, operation or by getting the x2 values as 10 or 01 we can go to no carry comma 0 only if, if we get 0 comma 0 and we can get to carry 0 uh, by doing the same operation 1 comma 1 as we did in the previous step so and we can't go to carry comma 1 because we are not having anything in the first place as shown in this example which we were discussing so over here this first case uh, the carry comma 1 case was completely ruled out when we don't have a no carry in the first place now we come to carry comma 0 which will mean that if i am carrying a value of 1 and i am printing 0 i can't go to no carry comma 0 in any ways right um, this will mean that I need to get so the one from this carry phase is actually there and if I get a value like 0 comma 0 it will at least print one now if I get a value like 0 comma 1 the one will be added up over here and it will let lead to a carry of one again now if I uh, put a value of 1 comma 1 it will further lead to the printing of one with a carry of one being done so this no carry comma zero case is completely not possible we rule it out in any way it is not going to happen i can definitely get no carry comma one if i get the um, output uh, sorry input as zero comma zero because we already have a value of one over here we add it to this one plus zero plus zero will give me one and there will be definitely no carry after this because one is printed and there is no carry we can get uh, the value of carry comma zero from carry comma zero only if i getting zero comma one uh, so in that scenario the one which is carried in this step will be getting added up over here on adding it we are going to get the output as zero but a value of one will be carried forward so we will remain in the same step now if i put one comma one so this 1 plus 1 plus 1 will be 3 which is actually equal to 1 when we reduce it into binary terms and then there will be a carry of 1 so over here the carry of 1 is happening because there was actually a carry of 1 uh, from the previous step this node uh, hidden layer gets activated where 1 comma 1 is present and on adding all the three terms we are actually printing one as well and we are carry forwarding one as well the same holds for carry comma 1 as well uh, we are finally able to complete the table and the state transition kind of looks like this so the entire tabular uh, representation is explained graphically over here now we see that there are four states possible we don't need an initialization state uh, like we did in the previous video uh, because uh, over here anything can happen in any of these four states like any process can start from any of the four states we don't have to specifically call out uh, the initial state so we assign weights to our states now if i have four hidden states we can very well assign a vector of three hidden nodes to each of the states which i am doing over here again the representation is completely a design problem we can uh, even assign one 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 to no carry comma zero and i can assign something else over here something else it's entirely these are like just arbitrarily chosen by me just to make the calculations a bit easy so i select these uh, three states and if i refer to the table which we do previously we are going to draw the same exact table as we did 
last time over here the problem is a bit simple uh, to be honest so like if i am having x1 and x2 as 1 0 and that is actually the nc1 like h1 and h2 no carry 1 which we are having because it is actually printing 1 and there is no carry which is happening over here um, so we are going to get the same state 0 1 0 like nc1 was uh, given the encoding of 0 1 0 then we add x1 x2 to it we just revisit the diagram that if we are at nc1 if we add um, 1 comma 0 to it then this is exactly what we are going to get we are going to remain in nc1 only we remain in nc1 and by doing the entire process we are able to complete the table which i showed it over here also the uh, respective transitions i have written kindly verify it so that it makes things easy and the first and foremost thing which we do over here is to start the things from back so we have the output yt and we try to map the output with the hidden states right so the output will be having a vector v which is definitely going to be a row vector because yt individually is having just one value and the number of columns in v is going to be the number of hidden nodes which we are having which is h1 h2 and h3 so v we have to find out uh, which is going to be a vector of order 1 cross 3 we proceed further we consider an equation which will show the relationship between yt and h1 h2 and h3 again these values are completely heuristically chosen uh, there is no possible way to identify the values uh, or a no uniform way to identify it you just look into the h1 h2 h3 and yt and then find the unique combination out of it and then see how it looks like over here you can see that yt is happening one over here here and here and if i just observe the value of h1 and h3 we see that if we negate the h1 negate the h3 and just follow what h2 is present because h2 is always one over here we just can't play with whatever value h2 is giving we just have to play with both h1 and h3 uh, whenever h1 and h3 are zero i am getting y as one this is what you can see over here as well now whenever h1 and h3 are one we are getting y as zero so one thing which we were able to get it from the initial observation is the fact that both h1 and h3 needs to be negated h2 needs to remain as it is because it's playing no role even if you remove h2 it won't matter at all because h2 is constant throughout and then we add a term b to it which is going to be the bias and then we do the usual calculation as we used to do previously and then say that the y2 will be uh, 1 if the value of at which is the activation function at time t is greater than 0 and uh, 0 otherwise now at will be greater than 0 only if this term 3 plus v is greater than 0 this happens when b is greater than minus 3 we pick up a term which is just greater than minus 3 which is minus 2.5 now on doing so we get the step activation function completed which looks like this minus h1 plus h2 minus h3 minus 0 0.5 this is the value of v which is uh, being incorporated and this is the final result we get a v uh, as a vector of order 1 cross 3 as we discussed ht is a vector of order 3 cross 1 and bias term is a constant now we have established the relationship between the output value and the hidden states now we have to establish the relationship between one hidden state with the other ones uh, so we proceed further so we consider h1 t minus 1 h2 t minus 1 h3 t minus 1 x1 and x2 all these five things we consider and try to model h1 now if i see the table properly again it's going to be very intuitive from this table which we are having having so if i just have to predict this x1 based on all these values h2 is not going to play any role h3 x1 and uh, so h1 and h3 are identical so we can pick anything from h1 or h3 i select h3 only h1 i can remain as it is and i add the terms 0 1 and 0 when i add the term i get 1 and the value of h1 is 0 now the next term when i add it 0 1 and 1 i get the value as 2 and h1 is 1 so uh, i add it again um, h3 x1 and x2 i get the value as 2 
and h1 is 1 so whenever on adding i am getting the value of as 2 i am getting the value of h1 as 1 and if i am getting anything less than 2 the value of h1 is 0 and this is exactly what i am going to model in our uh, solution that i kept h1 and h2 as dis disjoint because they don't play a role in decision making i could have done the multiplication of zero in the previous step as well but over here we can also do it and we focus only on x1 and x2 and added b to it now on doing so this is the decision uh, boundary which we are getting and we say that h1t is 1 if dt is greater than 0 and 0 else now dt will be greater than 0 and the value of 1 will be attained only when 2 plus b is greater than 0 b is greater than minus 2 and the immediately higher value from minus 2 is minus 1.5 we put it over there and this completes h1 now we will get the exactly same step function for h3 because h1 and h3 are exactly identical we only need to calculate for h2 now that's pretty intuitive h2 is always going to remain it as 1 we put h2 as a recursive function of h2 t minus 1 with x1 and x2 added and a bias term deducted as well uh, this even if you look in the table you will be able to find it intuitively and now uh, we represent the entire thing in the form of a recurrence formula for ht so we remember that uh, we need to find out w times ht minus 1 plus uh, u times xt plus b so we have w as the coefficients which we have determined previously like for h1 t minus 1 we just had to focus on h3 right so this was the activation function for uh, h1 t minus 1 where is it um, yeah so h1 was 0 h2 was 0 h3 was given the coefficient as 1 uh, so that's what we model it over here so we put it and the same uh, values go for h3 as well and for h2 we just assign the value of 1 to h2 and other values are 0 and let's see what all values x1 can take um, from h2 x1 is taking only positive values if i scroll up a bit while we were calculating the value of h1 x1 and x2 were positive again so it takes positive values the bias terms just changes it is 1.5 in the previous step and 0.5 here it is not a unique solution to it first of all i neither are the the solutions which you obtained in part two of the video was unique uh, this is one of the many solutions possible to solve the problem so on mapping it to the assumption which we had for the rnn we get the value of ht as a step activation function where w is attained over here this is the previous hidden step this is the value of u this is the xt and this is the bias and that completes the problem with w u and bh being calculated so this is how we were able to solve a problem where we started with uh, two strings input one and input two uh, there was a binary bit addition happening uh, as they say what was it yeah binary addition happening and then uh, on the basis of binary addition we needed to model the correct output uh, over here there were just finite set of numbers which were given to us and hence we were able to do it in a much better way but if we have to model the entire problem in the form of rnn we definitely will need a, a very uh, big set of input values and obviously a proper recurrent neural network fit in that scenario and the accuracy is definitely not going to be 100% as you can see over here so it was just a toy example to just demonstrate how a recurrent neural network needs to be modeled to give a feel of uh, how numerically we are able to model an RNN uh, and the uh, solution was oriented in that way but in all the practical life applications we definitely will be needing a framework like TensorFlow or Torch to model the entire scenario so that's it from my end thanks for your time